Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make Alvin and the Chipmunks house in Minecraft. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing and clicking that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. But without any further ado, let's get started. Now just before we get started everybody, here are all of the materials that we will need to make the house. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these and enough of them as well. The amount of space required to make the house is a 37 by 47 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground. As you can see, it's quite a large space, so you may want to make the grid to help you plan out the build. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to. Do make sure that you've got all that stuff. Make sure you've got enough room to make it. Make sure you're ready. And once you are, we can begin. Step one, my chipmunk friends. Come all the way over to the front left-hand corner of your grid. If you've made it, count to the right from the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then inwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is where we're going to start things off. Place 8 block of quartz on top of each other. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then extend that 8th block to the right by 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Join that block all the way down to the ground. However, also extend that block backwards by 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. To which you can then extend that all the way down to the ground. And then we can extend this 15th block across the back of the build and we can join it to the front of the build as well. So we can extend it forwards and backwards and we can also join this corner down too. So all in all, we should have this sort of shape. Now what I'm going to recommend is you fill in the left and right hand sides of the build using block of quartz. There are windows on this side of the build, but I actually find it's probably going to be easier to just start off with blank canvas and then we can just knock the windows in and everything will be good. Because there's only three windows on each side of the build and they only take up about four or so rows each. Or four blocks I should say, each. So we only have to destroy about 12 blocks out of the... I don't even know how many we're placing here. So what we want to have should look exactly like this. Right, ladies and gentlemen? So, that's not too bad, you know? We don't have to destroy too much. So, what we're gonna do on each side of the build is this. I want you to come on either the left or right side, we've gotta do it on both, and you come all the way down to the bottom left-hand corner. And you count to the right by three, that's gonna be one, two, three. You then count upwards by one, destroy that block, and the one to the right of it. The ones above as well, just like this. And then we want to go all the way over to the right hand side and we want to repeat that. So we start on the bottom right hand corner, we move inwards to the left, we go one, two, three, we move up, destroy, to the left, and then above, just like this. As simple as that. What we then want to do is we want to take the space in between these windows, we find the two middle blocks, which are these ones right here, yeah? And we want to leave a gap of two between the lower windows. And we want to destroy a two by two block gap area. So if you say take the upper part of this window here, you move to the right one, two, and then up one, two, and then you destroy the two by, by two block by two block gap like this. You can then fill all of these windows in using some blue glass paint. I like the light blue glass. I think that it looks closest to the actual house itself. I'll let you guys be the judge. You can use different colors of glass if you like. And what's also important for us is that we also place these window shutters here too. So I'm using dark oak trap doors on the left and right hand sides of pretty much every single window, except for two exceptions, I do believe. And um, it will just make the area look a little bit better like that. So now that we've done that on one side, we want to go ahead and do the same on the opposite side. So just to remind you, you start on the bottom left hand corner, you go one, two, three inwards, up one, and then you destroy. 
and then come to the other side, one, two, three inwards, and then destroy. You find the gap in between the middle two windows, you find these two blocks, you leave a gap of two, and then you destroy. But that also works out to be this lower left-hand window, you can go one, two, three, so here, and then up by two, and then you can destroy that. But we want to have glass pane in all of these. There's not really any other details present on the sides other than these windows here. Um, we will be adding some ivy, or as it is known, vines. We'll be adding some vines or ivy or, you know, some sort of climbing plant of some sort of description. And we will also be adding some flower beds around the side of the house. But it's actually quite a simple design. And that wants to be on the left and right hand sides there. Which now leads us to the front of the house, where there is a little bit more going on. Just a little bit more. So, on the front of the house, we are going to take the bottom left-hand corner of the front here, and we're going to place block of quartz extending inwards. We're actually going to place one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. We're then going to place two red concrete, one, two, and then we should be able to place also one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess this one's seven. Seven block of quartz extending to the right, just like that. What we can now do is we can extend the red concretes upwards by two rows, because this is going to be a door. You can place a block of quartz all the way around the door, which is all of those red concretes there, right? You can place block of quartz left and right in front of the door. The block of quartz only wants to go as high as the actual door itself. And then we want to place quartz slabs extending left and right above the door. So the door is kind of like set inwards. It almost, We give the illusion that the door is kind of like set back in relation to the frame of the house, even though it's not. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to fill in the rest of the front of the house using some block of quartz. And once the rest of the front of the house has been filled in with block of quartz, we just have a load of windows to do. We can even add some window boxes. And we can even add a drain pipe, which you guys will see. So, just like this. So, the drain pipe is going to go on the right-hand side here. And we're going to destroy this quartz slab, and we're going to place an entire row of diorite wall extending from the top of the house all the way down, like this. And some of you may have realized, by the way, and this is completely normal, the house isn't centered. What this means is that there is less blocks on this side than there are this side. The reason being is so that we can have the windows match up and evenly on both sides of the house, and we can still have the drain pipe. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So, now that we have the door and we have the drain pipe and all of that, we have to add windows. The windows are quite easy to make. So, the, this window, for instance, left of the door, it sits right in the middle of the wall, and it has two rows of two block of quartz next to each other on the left and right. And the glass itself is made out of blue glass pane, or light blue glass pane, and it also has the dark oak trap doors left and right of the window, as you might imagine like this. We have the same thing on this side. We leave a gap of one between the door. Well, it's actually a gap of two. Gap of two between the door, and then we destroy two by two, and then we place the glass, and then after that, we place the dark oak trap doors. So, like this. Now, you might be able to see. So, now, because the house is wider on this side, we get the drain pipe that is one row away from the window, which looks better, in my opinion, than having the drain pipe directly next to the window like this. We also want to have windows above these windows. So they're actually a little higher. You leave one and a half gap between these windows and the top windows. Just one row away from the top, half, one and a half rows away from each other like this. And then you can place another set of two by two windows just like so. And they're made in the exact same way. It's the exact same thing every single time. There's only two windows on this house that are not made in this way. And we're about to make one of them. There we go. <laughs> Flapping up. There we go. One of the windows is right here. It's right in the center of these two windows here at the top. It's a 2x2 two two window just like this. The difference being it doesn't want to have any shutters on the outside of it. That's one of the windows. 
Now that you have done all of this, ladies and gentlemen, that is what you want to have on the front of the house. We want a similar thing on the back. Similar, but not quite the same. So let's come all the way to the back here. And we are going to add an entrance. We're going to start here on the right-hand side, the bottom of the build, and we're going to extend six block of quartz going left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And... What we are then going to do, we don't have the material on us, unfortunately. Just for a moment, I'm just going to grab the double iron doors, and we're going to place double iron doors here, and then we're going to place another row of block of quartz, just extending like this. So the back entrance is even and level with the front entrance. The back entrance is a bit different, though, because I'm going to recommend that you place a little bit of glass around the entrance like this. I'm also going to recommend that you make a frame using block of quartz kind of like around the glass like so so just like on the left and right side of the glass and maybe just having a row of quartz slab just across the top of it like this or what you could even do is kind of like similar to what we did on the opposite side of the build there where we have like a whole row of quartz slab that kind of like um, bisects the house in half like this just like so and then that way you can actually place some uh, quite interesting looking ivy like this uh, we want to have windows as well, but I'm going to recommend that you just completely fill the walls in using some block of quartz. And then we can add windows, and we can add trap doors, and we can add um, window boxes, and all that sort of stuff. And we even have to add a drain pipe on the back. I'll give you guys a guess where the drain pipe is going to go. So, this is what we want to have. The drain pipe goes on this left side because it masks the fact that we have an asymmetrical build. The drain pipe makes it look as though it isn't this way. So that's what we want to have. Uh, the windows. The windows are the same as they are on the front pretty much, except they do kind of connect to the uh, to the back door a little bit. So you only leave a gap of one here on the back, and then you place... Here we go. We place a 2x2 two two square of glass like this, and then we place trapdoors to the side of it. You can change the design of the back door if you're not partic a particular fan of this. So, like, you could just have, um, you could, like, extend these inwards like this. Like, you could have a simpler back door entrance if you like it to uh, be a little bit more symmetrical. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. It's a very small change. And we want to, of course, have a window here as well. So, we leave a gap of two and then destroy two by two. We place glass in there. And then we place the trap doors around it, just like this. There we are. We also want to have windows up above, don't we? We leave a gap and a, a gap and a half uh, directly above the lower windows. Uh, we destroy a two by two block area, and then we place the glass pane in there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And then we place the dark oak trap doors left and right of the windows, just like so. Very nice. And then we just have a window directly in the middle of these windows. And you'll also find out that it kind of like lines up with the door as well. Just in case you need a few, uh, a couple of points of reference. That's not looking too bad, ladies and gentlemen. The next major change that I want to make to this house is the fact that I want to give it a roof. And, and then we can start adding other small details and slowly culminate to the rest of the house. So, the roof, I'm going to recommend that you place dark prismarine on the front and back of the house sideways so like going across this way like left to right extend the dark prismarine forwards extend the lower half forwards using prismarine slabs so there overhangs the house i also want you to make sure that the prismarine slabs overhangs the house on the left and right side so we want to have something which should look like this. That might seem a little bit complicated, but there's good reason for this, and I'll show it you. What we then want to do is we want to take the overhanging prismarine slabs on the left and right side, and we want to extend them inwards and upwards, extending towards the center of the build, like this. On both sides, the front and the back, we want to extend them inwards and upwards just like this until they will eventually meet together in the middle. And they will meet in the middle. And I can even show you where it will be and you guys might be able to see. It actually lines up with the glass of the middle window like that. 
So it actually it joins perfectly in the center. It's very balanced. You can fill the middle of the roof in using a, bl a block of quartz like this. And then from the outside, that looks very, very good. And on the opposite side of the build, you want to do the same thing again. So you want to extend these slabs inwards and upwards on both sides. They are eventually going to meet each other in the middle at some point in time. I'd recommend doing it evenly from both sides, if you can. It depends where you're building this and how you're building this. But if you can, extend both sides inwards and upwards like this until they eventually do meet in the middle. And then we can place block of quartz just underneath and in between, just like so. This and this and this that's perfect and then we just have to join both sides of the roof together half of the roof is made out of pure prismarine the other half of the roof is made out of prismarine slabs so i'm going to recommend that you connect uh one set of blocks to the other set of blocks and i wouldn't recommend just using pure slabs all that does matter in the end is that you do connect both halves together how you get there not such a big deal but it will save you a bit of time if you do use the blocks where you're able to. And it will also make it easier to place the slabs as well uh, if you do use that. But if you are trying to save a little bit of material or, you know, uh, an inventory space, then you're more than welcome to just use these slabs. So this will give us a pretty nice looking roof all said and done once we finally um, moved all the way uh, across it, just like this. That's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. It's quite a nice color match, and it's quite a good shape match as well. Well, what we're going to do as well is we're going to give the house a chimney. The chimney is made out of block of quartz, and it's actually going to be placed on the... So where the apex of the roof is, on the right side of the house, ladies and gentlemen, here, we're going to find the apex, and we're just going to like move in diagonally towards the back. And the chimney is going to be like a 2x2, two two, like a little 2x2 two two quartz formation like this. And it's just a very minor chimney. It's, just, it's very, very small, but that's exactly where it wants to be. It wants to, it wants to be visible on most parts of the house as you kind of like walk around it. Now that we have done that, ladies and gentlemen, what we are now going to do is decorate the house a little bit. So, to decorate the house, we need a, a few different materials, and some old ones too. We need some cut sandstone slabs, some oak leaves. We, I'm not going to use bone meal just yet. We're going to use some vines, we need some green carpet, perhaps a little bit of red concrete. We'll also need a birch button, very, very important, seems minor though. And we'll leave it at that for now. So, beginning on the left and right side of the entrance, I want you to place a row of two cut sandstone slabs extending outwards from the entrance. The cut sandstone slabs are then going to extend around the house and on the front and back of the house you are going to have a gap of two but on the sides of the house you only want to leave a gap of one. So just extending around like this using your cut sandstone you will join to the opposite point on the back of the house. Remember, sides of the house get one row, the front and back of the house get two rows, like this. Good. On the front and back of the house I'm going to recommend that you add leaves, hugging the house. You can do this on the sides as well but I'm going to recommend you break it up. I'm going to recommend that you don't completely have leaves so that we can place some flowers in there. So just place a little bit, kind of like this. Now that we've done that, I want to give the front door a doorbell, or a door handle rather, and that's just going to be a birch button right there. I'm going to recommend that you add vines to the house. So you can do this in all sorts of different patterns, however you want to do it. You don't have to add loads of vines, you can add a load of vines if you like. It tends to be that the middle window actually has an entire encom uh, encompass of vines like this. I'd recommend also underneath the top windows to add window boxes. These are made out of red concrete with green carpet on top of them to simulate flowers. You could even use pots with flower actual flowers in them. And it just looks like window boxes for actual flowers. You're going to do that on the back as well, but I'm just going to focus on adding a little bit of vines. And the vines, I think, will actually grow by themselves. So we, we can quite easily just kind of like leave some of them and then they'll sort 
sort of take care of themselves. But I'm going to add the window boxes first this time on the back, just because I think it makes more sense. So the red concrete with the uh, green carpet on top of them. And then we're going to place the vines in a similar sort of fashion to what we did on the front, to be honest with you. You never get a very good clear shot of the back of the house, so a lot of this is a little bit of guesswork. So, there we go, that's not looking too bad. And then on the side as well, we'll kind of just add them around the windows and stuff. Yeah, see, they're already growing a little bit, so um, we don't have to... We can just kind of leave them and we'll see what sort of state they're in a little bit later on. So that's not looking too bad, ladies and gentlemen. We've done a huge amount of the house there. What I would li now like to do is I would like to grab the shovel and I would like to add a two row, two rows of grass path going entirely around the outside of our house. So grass path, two entire rows of it I want to have going all the way around the outside of the house. And it's going to meet at the back door, very similar to the way that the cut sandstone slab did. So, all in all, we want to have a nice path. The path is also going to be extended a little bit. We'll actually do that after this. Um, it wants to go all the way to the back door, look. And it wants to run all the way up this left side here, just like this. The only thing about... So now that we've done that, by the way, and that's looking pretty good, you know, we're rarely getting there. I'm very happy with this. The grass path on the left side wants to extend forward all the way to the grid that we have. So unfortunately, we have a bit of concrete here, but I do want to represent it to you. So on the left side, we actually have like a driveway, and I want to extend the path just on the left side of the build, only on the left. I want to extend it to be four blocks wide because there is a, there's actually like a drive there, so like a car could go on. We also want to have a path that leads from the entrance to the outer perimeter, so if you extend the two middle blocks of the entrance using your path, you'll have something which should look like this. If you kind of want to represent the area that we are kind of like filling in, um, I'm going to place birch fence on top of the outer part of the grid. These are the remaining parts of the grid. I don't want to place fence on top of the on top of the grass path because that would ruin it. I want to place it on all of the remaining part because there is a very clear boundary that does go all the way around Alvin and the Chipmunks' house. Uh, so all the way like this. That's perfect. So just kind of, you know, put a boundary, put a border around the place. It just makes it look a little bit better. Now that we've kind of got all of that taken care of, ladies and gentlemen, I want to add the pool. I know for a fact that there is a pool in the back garden. Only because there is a very one image of it that I could actually find. But I know that there's a pool. I can't even tell you precisely what it looks like. So we've got to use a little bit of guesswork here. We're using quartz slabs for this. We're using water buckets. We might even use a little bit of prismarine. Might even use a little bit of block of quartz. And uh, later on we'll need smooth stone. And we'll need... Okay, we'll grab that with the other stuff later on. I was getting ahead of myself. Basically, the width of the pool is this. Where we have this cut sandstone slab here in the corner of the path on the back left hand corner of the house we want to place a row of quartz slab that is equal in length to this part of the uh, this part of the house here and then we're going to extend it a little bit further one two three so that it is as far as this corner of cut sandstone slab we're then going to extend it backwards by uh by i do believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a good shape for a pool. And then we're going to join it and we're going to turn it into a rectangle like this. We have to dig out the middle of the pool. I'd recommend digging two rows down so that we can give the pool a base. I think that I'm going to make the base of the pool prismarine because it kind of ties in with the house a little bit. I like to use materials that make sense and prismarine certainly does. It, it does make sense to have kind of like a dark part at the bottom of the pool. Equally so, we could use, say, smooth stone or, you know, any sort of other material, really. There's, there's plenty of pool bottoms that we could use, but dark prismarine, I think, would look quite good. And the sides, as you can see, we are leaving the sides exposed a little bit. We're going to be placing some block of quartz inside of here. So, all around the inside of the sides, just like this. Going to make block of quartz. There we are. And then once we've filled all of that in, 
we can then fill the pool in with water. So it's actually going to look really, really good. There we are. Oh, almost done it. There we go. So that's looking pretty decent. I also want to create kind of a lounging area. This lounging area is going to connect directly to the pool. It's going to take us all the way to the other corner where we have the cut sandstone slab. And the area is going to be made out of smooth stone. There's going to be a couple of sunbeds on this so that you can kind of like chill out and enjoy the sun by the pool. There's not really going to be anything else. This is all I could find that kind of goes. But I know there's a pool. I know that there's kind of like a relaxing part. I do not know anything else. If you if you watch Alvin and the Chipmunks religiously, if you know what is back here, like frame by frame, if you know exactly what can go here, then I would recommend that you add it. But I don't watch the series. I can only go by what I find like on the internet. So that's the area. Uh, to make the chairs, it's simply going to be quartz stairs, quartz slab. We're going to use some oak fence and rods. We're also going to use string and also some white and cyan carpet. And basically, we want to have these sunbeds somewhere along here. So the sunbeds, I'm probably going to have one. It's going to extend inwards by like two blocks diagonally. It's going to one end of the sunbed's going to go here, and the other one's going to go here. Um, we're going to have quartz stairs on the ends, kind of like in these positions. You can change them, and then we're going to have oak fence on the left of the quartz, and we're going to have two rows of end rods on top of each other. And then I'm going to stick a cyan carpet on top. And what I want to have is string that goes all the way around the upper end rod. So the string is going to go all the way around the upper end rod like this. And it is just going to make, allow us to place the top of our parasol. So here. And we're just going to make a parasol that has it works out to be pretty much like every other block is going to be white it's kind of like it kind of just looks like a plus shape really doesn't it so kind of just like a plus shape using the cyan and the white carpet it's looking pretty good there now that that is done ladies and gentlemen this is kind of like what we're working with at the moment i'm noticing that that vine is not growing where i want it to so i'm just going to help it out a little bit by kind of like uh, extending it Kind of like around and down the window a little bit. That's that's not looking too bad. Maybe even a little bit like there. And then that's looking okay. All we have to do now to finish off this house, ladies and gentlemen, is we have to grab some bone meal, some oak saplings. And believe it or not, that, that'll actually do it. Unless you want to get a little bit more precise. But I'll show you what I'm on about. I want one tree here in the front left-hand corner of the house. There's a tree. It's a relatively large one. That's not a bad size. There's a tree here in this back, in this front left corner. And there's a tree in the back right-hand corner. There's actually a few trees, but I don't want to place loads and loads of trees. And then I'd highly recommend just bone mealing the grass. Just to add a little bit of colour and excitement to the area. Um, the grass actually seems to be in relatively good condition uh, for the show. But I like the idea of adding some colour. So, you know, add this or, or don't add this. You're going to have to think about it, though, because bone meal is hard to undo. I'd also bone meal inside of the grass that we kind of have, um, like, around the house. You might find that you want to add more flowers to it, though. Some parts of this is actually getting quite flowery, but other parts is not so much. But I, it, it kind of is, it's kind of like a wild house. It's kind of nice. Um, I, this is completely up to you whether you want to do this. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. But if you do want to make, you know, if you want to make it more colourful, um, just simply just add some more flowers, like kind of going around the outside a little bit. It's completely up to you whether you do that and how you do that. But that's that's what I might do. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is the house complete. So this is what your house will look like once it has been 100% fully completed, ladies and gentlemen. We have an extensive yard, garden, we have a pool, we have a relaxing area. The house is nice and nature-filled with vines, hedges and flowers. It's a really, really cool build, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. If you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and click that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate all of you very, very much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!